fence here. Now that the components are placed, we have added the cross-section information and we have set up the constraint manager, a review of the power and ground requirements is advisable. As part of this process, power and ground nets that require full planes, split planes, islands, or nets which can be routed should be identified. Once these requirements are determined, it is good design practice to add the necessary planes and copper into the design so that the proper predetermined return paths are available for every critical net as they are routed. Cadence products have the ability to add various types of solid copper elements. Entire layers can be specified as plane layers. Remember the cross-section video? Solid copper plane layers can have singular nets, typically ground layers, or they can be split up as needed amongst many nets, more commonly known as split planes. Sectioning plane layers is done using the addition of 2D line elements called anti-etch. The beauty to anti-etch lines is that they can be easily moved if circuits change and the planes need updating. It's that easy. Copper can also be added as dynamic, solid copper, or crosshatch copper to any layer, or can be added as part of a footprint. Each of these types of copper can be added into a design using the shape add commands and using the options pane settings to control shape specifics. Editing positive shapes is made very easy with the shape edit app mode. Copper shapes can also be rearranged with the lower and raise priority settings which are available as right mouse button selections after a copper shape has been selected. Using the command shape manual void, copper areas that are not required can be removed and if need be, multiple copper shapes can also be merged. These are just some of the many features Cadence provides the designer when dealing with copper shapes. We make it that easy.